Jesus be exalted above all the negativity right now. Be exalted over anything that's trying to plague my mind right now. Be exalted over any of the issues that the world is concerned about right now. Jesus, be exalted. Woo! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! If there's not a better time right now, then for any of us that call ourselves sons and daughters of God to shine right now, there is not a better time right now in the world, right now, than for the church of God to shine. With all the stuff that I'm almost positive that everybody in this church knows what's going around, whether you are watching the news or not, someone on your job is bringing it to you. Someone in your family is bringing it to you. When they are bringing it to you, what response are they seeing out of you? When they are bringing it to you, what type of emotion or thought are you left with after they bring this news to you? I just want to talk to us. That's what I want to do. I want to talk. What I mean by that, you don't have to worry about standing up and opening your Bibles. I want to talk. Sometimes I like to do things the way that Jesus did in the Bible. Jesus just talked. I rarely ever see him stood up and say, I want y'all to turn to the book of Malachi, <laughs> chapter 3, verse 6. And when you get it, say amen. <laughs> All right. So, but what has been pretty much on me a lot lately, I'm almost positive, I'm almost certain because a lot of you have come to me and told me, you guys seen the video that's been circulating around, the video that went viral from this school board meeting. I never even got up here and really spoke to you guys about it. But if you don't know about it, right now it's over 80 million views worldwide. And all it was was simply me standing up for righteousness. No matter how you call it, I know they call it critical race theory, but pretty much what I was doing, I was just standing up for righteousness. So from that, it caused a global phenomenon I had no idea the depths that it has reached. I knew it was a central thing. I knew it made it all over Bloomington. Then all of a sudden, it made it all over Illinois. Then all of a sudden, it made it all over the United States. I didn't know any of this, nor, to be honest with you, and the ones that follow me on my YouTube channel, they know that I did not care. I was just doing what I always do, speaking truth, speaking righteousness, no matter what. And right now, have you ever seen in the Bible where he said, the harvest is full? Be few workers. Right now, if you feel that you have any purpose in God at all, all you have to simply be is a light. It's so complicated because we got so many different ministers out there, so many different folks we've seen on TV, so many well-known folks that got mega churches and everything that they bring, it seems to be so articulated so well that these people have to be of God. And I'm not trying to call any of them out, but what I am saying is this. With the stuff that we have going on right now in all the world, I have come to a conclusion. I've told this to many of my minister friends, and I'm not going to say their names. They know who they are. We talk on the phone. Where is God in you that we were so strong about bringing forth? Where is this strong God that before all this pandemic, yeah, you heard me, pandemic started going around, before all this stuff started happening, you were strong in the Lord. I know God can do this. I know the Lord is this. I know the Lord is that. This God of the Bible, he brought the children of, children of Israel out of Egypt. This God, he delivered David. This God, now what we got going on right now? I'm not hearing God as a deliverer. Come on and preach. 
This is some real stuff, guys, because right now, this, what's going on in our world right now, this is going to actually not only be a test just for the world itself, this is going to be a test to the so-called God that you so-called serve, that's so-called real in your life. This is going to be a real test of these, I'm just being real, some of these fake amonies that we hear people stand up and preach. Woo, when I think of the goodness and all that he's done for me, but right now, nobody thinking about no goodness. Come on and preach. What kind of testimony are we going to have through this? What kind of testimony are we going to have once this is all over with and done? Because I'm just saying. See, Brother Warren, I can't, I can't be fake about it no more. Not that I ever was fake, but I'm talking about the friends. I can't be, I can't, I can't kind of listen to them tell me some stuff no more and then just kind of, uh, I'm kind of, brother, I'm confused. We came up together. You no, know, I mean, I'm, you know, you preached, we, we preached together and everything. I'm confused. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. I'm so, not, no, this is just a figure of speech when I say I'm confused. I'm not confused at all. But I'm saying this to them as a figure of speech. I'm confused, man. Where is this strong God? Where is this deliverer? Where is this he can make a way out of no way? Because right now, that is not what I'm hearing. Out of minister's mouth. This is a time where we should be saying, God is going to make a way. This is a time where we should be saying, I have no fear at all because I know God is going to make a way. Do you know right now, even though we read the Bible, we say, oh man, look at all the great things God did in this Bible. Look. We are actually living that time right now. All those things that was going on in the Bible, you do know that was not just happening to God's people. That was happening in all the world. But it seemed like God had this awesome pattern, Brother Thornton, of always delivering his people. His people. He always delivered his people. Right now. Man, I don't know. You know, they said this Delta bear. So what? Did you get past the last one? Yes, well, what makes you think God's not going to bring you out of this one? Well, oh, no, because they say, I don't care what they say. What do he say? Well, God ain't really talking to me right now. Well, you better start talking to him. We have to actually start acting like we are the saints of God that we claim that we are. We all are good. Oh, I know God can when everything is going good, but now that everything is right now, where are we? Where are we? There is a world out there that's looking for every last person that say they are of God right now. They are absolutely lost right now. A man that walking in darkness knowing not where he stumbled. The world is full of darkness right now and they are looking for a light. Where's the church? Let your light so ever shine. You shall be a light of the world. Where is the light? Where is the light? And quite honestly, Brother Thornton, this should be easy for us. Guys, I'm telling you right now, it should be easy for us. The simplicity of God is so simple that man jumps in and complicates it. Man jumps in and complicates it. He just said, let your light so ever shine. Christ in you. If Christ is in you, somebody ought to be seeing that right now. Are y'all even understanding this? I'm talking to the ones that listen to this on YouTube as well. If Christ is in you, if no one is seeing that light, you got to start asking yourself what's going on. If you can't even see that what is going on right now is a whole bunch of fear-mongering. Fear-mongering. I was speaking the other day in an engagement, Brother Thorne. I told him, I said, now, I know that I get up here, and no matter where it is, you guys, some of y'all seen interviews on Fox News, I always talk about, I talk about God, talk about Jesus. One of the last interviews I said, the lady said, you have a 20-year marriage, X, Y, and Z, you got every this, this nigga. How are y'all, how was you able to keep that together? I said, Jesus. They were like, oh, wow, the news, you can see their faces. They were, whoa. Yeah, I said, Jesus, I said, my wife has a relationship with Jesus. I got my own relationship with Jesus. As long as we have our own personal relationship with Jesus and he's ruling her, he's uh, over me, then that's how it's done. That's how we're doing it. All of a sudden, from that right there, first time, folks coming out, ah, man, hey, wait a minute. The news let this dude get on there and say Jesus. They didn't even blank it out. They didn't edit it or anything. I've had all kind of people to tell me, I mean, folks, as y'all know this, in the political world, we've been Brandon Taylor, Cannon, I heard all kind of people tell me, hey, man, when I said Jesus on there, for some reason, they edited my part out. They didn't edit it out. Come to find out, the woman that was an anchor on there, she is a believer of Christ. Let that stay in there. 
All of a sudden, I'm getting emails and calls, all kinds of stuff, Brother Wilson, from all kinds of ministers. Hey, man, I'm, that's, that's crazy that you got up there and you said Jesus, you know, because typically on a platform like that, you know, that's not where you want to. What do you mean that's not where I want to? I'm telling you right now, that's why I have, I have absolutely no fear. I have absolutely no shame in who I serve and who I stand for. Absolutely not. I don't care. Where, if you ask me, where did I get this from? I'm going to tell you where I got it from. Whether you want to see that truth or not, that's on you. But I'm not ever going to deny Jesus. Ever. Hallelujah. Well, man, they're going to start to come. I don't care what they do. I'm still going to stand on Jesus. What is wrong with y'all? So that's letting me know who actually is ruling you. Who is whispering in your ear and got you scared? You a minister? You talking about you won't go in front of people and talk about Jesus because you don't want to offend nobody. Truth knows no color. Truth knows no race. Truth is just simply truth. If you get offended by truth being brought forward, that is not my problem. I'm just simply saying the truth. Plain and simple. See, what we got going on right now, if y'all know this, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a whole thing I just told about throwing this a few minutes ago, over the past 10 years. You know, when you're in medicine and you get people coming in from different ailments and all this, and you see what they're being prescribed, you start to see a downfall. And I'm telling you right now, ladies, this is nothing against you guys at all. But do y'all have any idea what would happen if all men were destroyed, you know what would happen? What would the protection be? Uh-oh, about to step on some stuff. What would the protection be? If y'all can't see right now, they're doing a huge thing to try to emasculate men. You can see it all over. Brother Thorne, one of my, one of my great friends, one of a good friend of mine, they want me to come and speak at a, a seminar. A seminar, and this seminar is going to be on masculinity toxicity. Toxic masculinity, Brother Wilson. Men are too toxic now. Their masculinity is too toxic right now in the church. I said, you know what? Absolutely not. Come on, brother. You got to understand, man. We have to uplift our women. We have to. No, no. I get all that. I get all that. I know that with my own wife and all that, but I don't have to do that to none of the women in the church. Whoever have a husband, your husband should be doing that. I don't have to exalt none of that. What are you talking about? Well, we got to make, no, we got to show, we got to get, get in touch with that estrogen side of us. This was on a little handout they gave out. These are some of the things they want to hit on. You mean my soft side? There ain't no soft side. That's what's wrong right now. A whole lot of beta males is what I call them. Beta males. Scared to stand up and be men. Well, you know, if we say something, they're going to try to, I don't care what they try to do. Don't put your hands on me. You can talk and yap, yap, yap. Just don't put your hands on me. We good. I'm not scared of. The thing that got them fearing right now is because most people are coming back and telling me on the internet, they're saying, you know what, the thing that's kind of crazy about what you're doing right now is that you seem to have absolutely no fear. I'm of no reputation. I don't care. They, Brother Thorne, people came out, we about to come against this guy. They, they had a whole rising up and all this. We can already call the radio station that he does, and we're going to actually call up there. We're going to get this guy canceled. I said, did y'all even look at my radio show and see what the name of my radio show is? The name of my radio show is Cancel This. You're going to cancel, that's the name of my radio show. And you're going to come and cancel that. Because we don't like what he's talking about, all this God stuff and all that. He up there talking about men need to, yes, men need to stand up and be men. Because guess what? I told them, whether you believe this or not, even in the animal kingdom. Ladies, I told you again, there's not nothing to get shown. I'm just spitting facts. I'm just, I'm just pushing truth out there. The animals in the animal kingdom know to go after the females. They know this. They wait for the male to be gone or something like that, and then they say, no, they come in and want to take over. They go after the female. Who did the devil go after in the Garden of Eden? Uh-oh. Y'all do know that before Eve was created, the devil still was around. Eve get created. Why he decide to go to Eve? He knew who he can get. He didn't go to the man. And last time I checked, did the Bible not say, whenever the spirit comes back, it has to overtake the strong man? Did it not say that? Reading your history, show me any war that was won by majority women. It was always by men. Right now, the world is trying to do the opposite. They want to emasculate men. They want to take fathers out of the house. They want to just take men completely out of the picture. Let's uplift women. Look at most organizations out there. They are really pushing women up and bringing men down. Knowing good and well that if we get it to get like that, if we get their mindsets to be like that, then it's going to be easy to just come in and destroy a society. <laughs> We are in a world right now that all they see is darkness. 
They need to see light. Don't be a witness, but be witnessed. Y'all heard me? You don't have to go out there. I, heard, I mean, it's a thing. I don't know if y'all ever heard it saying. It says, preach the gospel everywhere you go, and if necessary, speak. Don't go around trying to witness. Be witnessed. People are watching you. People are looking at your response. They're seeing what you have to say about what's going on right now. If I come and talk to you all, man, you see what they said about this stuff that's going on, that, that, that Delta variant? That Delta variant, man, yeah, I know, man. They're saying the, the, the numbers are going up. And see, no, I'm like, okay, yeah, I heard about what they said, but anyway, it, it has, there's no, no death rate with that, so what? See, when you cut it off like that, Brother Wilson, they have no more to get into. I want, I, I want, Brother Wilson, I want, you, I want you to feed off this fear I'm trying to let you know about. I want you to feed off this fear that I'm trying to, you know, all time. But look, they said that they said that the hospitalization, I'm like, wait a minute, I go to like three different facilities. I don't care what they said. There's a difference between hospitalizations and somebody being admitted. You do know that, right? This is what they're not telling you. See, the whole thing is about to get you to get scared. Because if you can be scared, you end up having that fear in you. If you have fear in you, you can be easily controlled. If you are being controlled, you are not you. You are whatever fear is driving you to be. But you're not you. Driven by complete fear. Being controlled by fear. But then he'll come along and say, fear not. Well, oh no, Jesus. because this, this Fear not. Well, Jesus, you just, fear not. Who is your captain? Who leads your life? Who leads and guides you every day? I tell you what, if you had a real vaccination of the Holy Ghost and you've seen what those side effects is, this wouldn't be affecting you. What do you mean? What's the side effects of the Holy Ghost? What, what do you mean side effects? Get the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit lead you into all truth and righteousness. And if you have that in you, then you will see what the side effects of that is. I don't have no fear. People losing their minds. The highest suicide rate in the world ever in the history of this world since the pandemic. The highest suicide rate around the whole world. Isolating people. He said in the beginning, it is not good the man not be alone. These people are smart that's pushing this stuff on us. I heard from somebody's mouth that actually used to be one of these folks that actually was up there what they call the elites. You know what he told me? The way we, tried to, the way we did control people, because what happened, again, with that video going viral, and then some other videos that came out about that, and I always talk about God, I push God, I push it, I push it. These people went onto my YouTube channel and tried to find them. Let me see if this guy just did this. Because Brother Thorne, I don't know if y'all noticed, you know, Brother Wilson, they turned around and said, I was a paid actor. I was a paid actor. I'm not even married. I don't have no sons. I'm some football coach from Montana that the Republican Party put there. But the great thing about those videos on YouTube is that you can always go back and try to find something in there. There's a video up there that was talking to me. I said, I don't lean to the left. I don't lean to the right. I lean up. I'm not associated with anything but Christ, but God. So wait a minute. You're going to all these different engagements and speaking, and you're not a Republican? I said, no. You're not a Democrat? I said, no. Are you conservative? I don't, what, no. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you liberal? No. What are you then? I'm just whatever Christ is. So you're a Christian, if you want to say that. Well, what denomination are you? I'm not one. Well, oh, so you're non-denomination. No, because that's a denomination itself. No. So then what are you? I said, what did Christ and the apostles didn't call themselves? Well, they didn't call themselves nothing. Well, neither am I. This is what I'm seriously saying to these people. And all of a sudden, oh, we ain't never heard nothing brought like this. See, folks, y'all have to understand, people want truth. They want truth. And if he is the way, the truth, and the life, then that's all I can do is give them that. That's it. I'm not going around asking these people, can I come here speaking? These people are seeking you out. They're seeking me out. And all of a sudden, you get this huge influx of folks just all of a sudden standing up. If you just go on Google and put in critical race theory, parents stand up, all of a sudden you see people everywhere standing up because they're coming after the kids, coming after the young ones, coming after this next generation. When that guy told me, he said we use a lot of things. He said we pretty much use 95% of what we do to actually cause distraught within the nation. He said we get it from the Bible. Pretty much... It's antichrist. What the Bible says to do, we're going to find a way not to do it. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Oh, let's find a way to actually get them not to do that. A house divided against itself shall not stand. Who said that? The Bible. Now, also it goes on to say things like, if you can't take care of your home, how are you going to take care of the church? But we keep on associating with the building. But if you are of Christ and in Christ's body, that is the church. So wait a minute. If, I, if he said division, a house divided against itself should not stand, what about a city divided against itself? 
What about a state divided against itself? What about a nation divided against itself? What about the world divided against itself? If you haven't figured out right now, it's not a black thing, a white thing. It's not a gender thing. It's not a social economic thing. It's all about division. All about division. Who causes division? So that's why I tell people, so if you look at it, I don't care who it is. When it all comes down to it, I don't care who's behind it. It is evil. It's the devil and his angels, fallen angels, working behind all this. And the guy said, you are absolutely right. Yes, we practice witchcraft. That's what we do. Yes, but the way we looked at it is that Lucifer means light, so we figured that Lucifer was the one of the light. These people flat out telling you this stuff. They will flat out tell you. And this man said, oh, I've been away from it for X amount of years, and please don't disclose this and say, oh, I got you. I won't do that. But we knew it all along. And I, even though he told me that, I didn't really need him to tell me that because the Holy Spirit already lets me know that this is a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle, but what you don't understand is that you have so much power in you, it shouldn't even be a fight. That's what has people messed up right now because you're not going around scared. No. But what if they, I don't care. I know what I stand for. I said about man two months ago, we are on a winning team. Uh-oh, y'all forgot about that one, didn't you? We are on a winning team. Did y'all forget that? Did you forget in the Bible that every time Jesus and his uh, people, water or God, back in the Old Testament, did you forget that they always won? Just amazes me, Brother Wilson, because what's going to tell you what I love about this, Brother Thornton? I believe that Bible so much. And those stories so much. And when I got the Holy Spirit and that leading spirit is within me, here go a battle tiling. Okay, I'm running to it. David. Well, that giant, y'all all know that story. That giant, y'all know what it said David did? Did David sit there and say, and David kind of stood back? It said David ran towards it. Ran towards it. Oh, this is nothing. Oh, oh that's because, oh, I'll get this. Oh, y'all scared because y'all used to fight with shields and swords. Y'all don't know you can fight from afar, right? I'm going to just throw this rock at his head. Boom. Simple. Being led by God. When Moses then were warned, being led by God. We sit there and we praise these stories in there right now. But what about God being a story in our life right now? What about right now? What about God being a hero in our lives right now? What about God being a deliverer to what we got going in the world right now? Allow God to be God and shine in your life right now and see him as a deliverer. Otherwise, you just telling me that God's deliverer is nothing. Otherwise, your testimony is just a bunch of words being brought forth because you know how to testify. But is it a real testimony? I'm going to get up here and never say, man, God is an alcohol deliverer because I had never had to get delivered from alcohol. I will tell you that God is delivered from suicide. Uh-huh. I will tell you that God is delivered from starvation. I can tell you that God is delivered from having a poisoned mind. I can tell you that God is delivered from wanting to be a pre-murderer. I can tell you that. God delivers. I can testify to that. I can say that. But right now, all of us, the whole church, the whole church, everybody in the whole world is facing this right now, and they are looking for someone to actually guide them out of because they have nowhere to look. Nowhere to look. This should be an easy thing for people in the God. It should be just an easy thing. Just be witnessed. When they come to you, you hit them back with light. Don't worry about it. God got this. Well, no, see, man, because they said this. Okay, I get it. I got you. Don't worry about it. God got it. Don't worry about it. God has you. So with the Holy Spirit being in you, have you ever asked yourself what are the long-term effects of that? Y'all ever thought about that? I'm telling you right now, I know that everybody is not there, but y'all have no idea of what it's like to be so sold out to Christ that you don't even care about your life. I do not fear death. I don't fear it at all. I don't fear death. I don't fear nobody's idle threats at all because guess what? Ultimately, no matter how I'm going to go out, I'm going to go. You know we're all going to go. I'm going to go one day, but the thing is, knowing that I have that long-term effect of being in Christ, it doesn't matter how I go. It does not matter. And you know what they said? The worst people that you can sit there and deal with is somebody that don't care about their life. So what I'm referring to, y'all know, like the suicide bombers, they say there's nothing you can do to a suicide bomber but kill him because their mind is made up. You are not stopping me from getting to my goal. You want to kill me. But let me just know you want to kill me. Okay. You got about five seconds. Beep, 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 beep. There ain't no stopping them. So right now, that's what's scaring them right now because they know I don't care about anything they have to say about me. You sitting there bringing the truth, and I'm sitting there saying the reason why these things are going on because people don't want God. 
This is a result of not wanting God. You know what? I don't want no, I don't want, no, I don't want no man to be, okay. Now you're being overran. You will never see a pride of lions without having no male lion or two or three that's actually over. You will never see gorillas without having a male silverback being a protector. Because if he gets out of the way, then everybody else is getting ready to be completely annihilated. Strong men. I have nothing against women, but like I said, it's something about our roles that God naturally put in us. Men are naturally bigger than women. We got natural mus more muscles than you guys. Our bone structure is more distant than you guys. It's a reason. And so anyway, the world can get you to be convinced that I don't need no man, don't no man, ain't no man gonna, ain't no man gonna, and then guess what? Tell me, I can't find one happy one right now. The ones who push that, I got my career, I make money, I don't need this, I don't need that. They are the most despicable, desperate, and depressed people in the world. Want to know how I know? Because they'll sit there and email you. I got tricked into thinking like that. You're right, I got tricked into thinking. I, I was one of those people who said, I'm independent. I don't need no man. I make my own money. You're going home to a lonely, empty house. And you might have a few cats or something. But even they, even they, they use you. They don't care nothing about, cats don't care about you. Meow, meow, feed me. Okay, going about your business. But when I come in the house, okay, let me, let me rub up against you. Matter of fact, you pet me and make me feel good and also feed me. It's a reason why it's like that. It's a reason why God designed it that way. And what I keep on, when I go to these little symposiums, and I, I can feel it, I can feel it coming off the women. You just, mm, mm. I can feel it coming off of them. <laughs> so I asked them, tell me this. Hmm. Be honest with yourself. You know deep down inside, you know deep down inside that I'm right. But you're scared to say that I'm right because now that you are so deep into it, you wonder what the ones around you are going to say about you because you are so deep into it. We don't need no man. We don't need this. We don't need that. We don't need to do anything. We can do this on our own. We independent. But you know deep down inside what the real truth is. And half of them, they won't say it right there on the spot. You know how it is. Y'all know how it is. Somebody will come to you afterwards. Let you know, yeah, what you're saying is right. And yeah, you know, I just thought, you know, and I'd show, I want a family and I want this. And I'm trying to think, like, how am I going to, you've been so thrown off by what this world system is telling you how to think that you don't even know how to think for your own self. We have people that are so controlled right now that Brother Thornton, it's amazing. Having some of these debates with some folks, when they come out and try to throw stuff at me, oh, well, you don't understand. We got this going on, we got that going on, and what we want, what we want, what we want. So, well, what's keeping you from getting it? I got nieces, nephews. I got people that I mentor, young kids. One is even middle-aged adults. When I go to them and ask them, what do you want? Do you know half of them can't even tell me? They can't tell you. Want to know why? Because they are so conditioned to what TV tells them what they should want. It tells them how they should look. It tells them how they should think. It tells them what clothes to wear. And then when I ask them, okay, with all that off to the side, I want to know, what do you really want? Well, I, I, so you're going around hollering and screaming, yelling about stuff, about so-called injustices, and you don't even know what you want. Right now, it is a generation of people that feel like they are entitled. They feel like they're getting owed something. They feel like they deserve something. You don't absolutely deserve nothing but what you go and work for and get. Plain and simple. Y'all, and why don't you why I'm saying this? Because I'm getting ready to end this in a little bit. It's because a few buddies of mine and a few minister friends that I associate with, they are allowing this to actually come into the church. What are you talking about? They are allowing. They are allowing critical race theory to get ready to be pushed in the church. I know some of y'all don't know what it is, but if you don't know what critical race theory is, all you got to do is look up Marxism. Look up Marxism, you will find the basis of critical race theory. If you don't know what Marxism is, Marxism has something to do with a man named Karl Marx and what he pretty much did, I'm going to try to make this fast for you guys, what he did, he didn't like the fact that there were rich people versus people that were workers. So he came up with an idea to want to have a revolution to where he want to overthrow the ones that were rich. They called them bougie or they called them capitalists. He want to overthrow them through violence because he said we need to have classism. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to overthrow them through violence and share the, uh, share the wealth. 
not having to work for it to get it like they had to, but just feel like they deserve it. So this same type of thing tried to come around during the Civil Rights Movement, but Martin Luther King was really smart, and Martin Luther King said, I don't want it through violence, because now they want to use our race to actually get ahead using their Marxism. They want to overthrow people that were rich or people that had more than what they did, and they felt that they deserved it just because. It's not fair. We should be able to have what they have, too. I don't want to work to get what they have, but we should be able to have what they have. Plain and simple. Going against the Bible. A man that should not work should not. <laughs> I told you. Right out of the Bible. Let's do the opposite. So what do they do? Now they want to use race. Back in the 50s, they wanted to try to use race to actually push Marxism. But Martin Luther King came along. No, we're going to do this nonviolent. We want equality, not equity. It's a huge difference between equality and equity. Martin Luther King's gone. We see where we are right now. And I know it's a lot of people that actually stand for it, but I'm telling you right now, you can look it up yourself. Don't believe me. Organizations like Black Lives Matter, they tell you out of their mouths, Brother Thornton. She said, we are trained Marxists. Black folks don't even know what that means. They just still, Black Lives Matter, Black Matter. She said, we are trained Marxists. Thing I said I love about them videos, I said this when this stuff first came out with Black Lives Matter. I called it out and told them they are Marxists, and I said this is what they're doing. This thing is spiritual. The lady is actually on there saying the basis of Black Lives Matter and what we stand on, our foundations, is our ancestral spirits from Africa that leads and guides us. That's why we get up there, and if somebody dies that's black, we want to march with them. We keep saying, say their name, say their name, say their name. We say their name so we can conjure up their spirits so their spirits can come with us and work with us to carry out our goal. They saying this. I get up there and show the video and tell them this is them saying it, and they get mad at me. Well, well nobody, you, we, we, the black people disown you. You might be skin folk, but you ain't kin folk. I do not care because the kingdom that I'm part of has no color, it has no race, it has none of that. So I do not care. If you want to disown me from the black community, go ahead. The kingdom that I'm part of is none of that. And last time I checked, Jesus did not just die for no black folks. He died for all, all, all the sins of the world, including these nonsense chicks. I told them, see, the great thing about coming out of like what I came out of is that a lot of times you can actually relate to people that like is of a certain social economic status, and you can also relate to people that might be like in what they call a poverty status. So I had to sit there and break it down to some of these folks in the hood, because brother, when they came, I'm bored. Y'all know who D.L. Hughley is? Do anybody raise your hand if you know who D.L. Hughley is? Do you know who Steve Harvey is? Do y'all know who, I don't know, they, they call her, I guess her name is uh, Cookie or something in the uh, Empire. Am I getting that wrong? She played in Baby Boy. What's her name? Do y'all know her real name? Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she came out saying some stuff because I was on Fox News and I made a comment and I knew it was going to be a cliffhanger. I said, the division that they're trying to cause in America right now if you really looked up slavery, I said slavery never was about race initially. Set the world on flame. Are celebrities coming out now? Tyler, you got, I don't care about no D.L. Hughley. Oh, Tyler, Steve Harvey, I don't care about Steve Harvey. Oh, the cookie, she said something. Who's cookie? I do not care. I sat there and said slavery was not about race initially. What they did, they took what I said and just said, this fool, this Negro, he got up and said, slavery was not racist. Took my words out of context. Y'all better change it around or we can actually do this in court or out of court where I'm going to sue you for actually mis misrepresenting what I said. I said slavery was not about race initially, and it was not. Blacks were enslaved by other blacks. You do know that. You do know that that was impossible for them to come over there in them small boats and take a whole black continent and just take folks, right? I know y'all like this dude and went off into a history lesson. Yes, because that's what I'm saying is for. If you do not understand what God did all the way from that time to where we are right now, the most freest country in the whole world. And what they're trying to bring is that enslavement back. What are you talking about, Ty? Race never played a part initially in slavery. It was all about control. It was all about who they can have power over. The only difference is about the United States is when we got our Independence Day, we broke away from that. We're doing our own thing. But guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Right now, I told you about four months ago, the devil cannot take anything from you. He's defeated, y'all. He's defeated. But what he can do, like he did with Eve, is convince you to give it to him. Right now, they know they can't. Man, we're the most powerful nation in the world right now. They know they can't overtake us. They know they can't. But what they're, how are they trying to do it now? 
A house divided against itself. Get us to fight amongst each other amongst, we're going to fight, we're going to fight with each other according to our race. We're going to fight against each other according to the gender. We're going to fight against each other because of social economics. Now we're going to fight against each other because of critical race theory make its way in the church. And pretty soon it's going to be a fight right now. And that's in the church too. The masked and the unmasked. Division. Division. And when it all comes down to it, the end game is to have complete control again. I told him, the evil that had the enslavement physically way back then over all races is the same type of evil that's trying to make its way back to have enslavement over all of us again mentally. But if you are in God and the mind of Christ is in you, then you should be able to see this from afar and it will not overtake any of us that's in the church at all. There's no time for us to be fearful no more. There's no time for us to actually give in to this. You have to know that you know that you know that in Christ, there is no fear. In Christ, we always win. In Christ, we are the light of the world. All day long, insults. Insults, Brother Thornton. I got called stuff I ain't never even heard of, Brother Wilson. I had to look it up and see what it was. Matter of fact, if some of y'all watch a YouTube video, y'all know I'm holding, I got an Uncle Tom hat on in the cup. I didn't even know what that was at first. I found out what it was. I was like, oh, okay. See, that's why I said what happens if folks want to throw shade at you, you got, I'm telling you, you got the wrong one. You just never know how God would do things in your life at a young age. You did not know that this was coming to play when you get older. What am I talking about? Because we had nothing to do in the hood. You know, we used to just call this thing called, you know, I don't know if y'all know, it's called joning. Right now they call it roasting. We did it for play. Whether it was through doing rap battles or we just did it all. Hey, y'all, okay, hey, bet 50 cent. We getting ready to join on each other. Let's see who wins. So the whole point of being able to do that is that we can roast each other and actually not take real offense to it. You won your roasting contest based off of everybody. Oh, he got you. He got you. So now these so-called folks are trying to come at me now in the media and roasting me. I'm okay. They find it. So yeah, okay. You're this, you're that. Oh, okay. Black folks. You are Uncle Tom. I'm who? You are Uncle Tom. No, my name is Ty. I, I, I'm, I'm Uncle Ty. See, I know what they're doing, but I'm not going to play into that game now. You a porch Negro. I don't even have a porch. I got a deck, though. See what I'm saying? Right back at him. Right back at him. You, you, a, you a house Negro. I lived in an apartment. I lived in a little bitty shed. I lived in this. I lived in that. So I'm also, okay, so you said a house one. I'm also an apartment Negro. I'm a, uh, I'm a uh, double wide trailer Negro. I'm a, right back at him. Then they get mad and all of a sudden want to fight. And I just said this to Sister Thornton. I'm just being real with y'all. I don't know where it ever came to the point, Brother Wilson, where we supposed to be cowards. I don't know where we ever got to the point to where if anybody get in our face, we just supposed to, oh, I'm just going to sit back and pray that he, okay? Tyler, there's crazy people out there. Well, that's going to make two of us. What do you mean? What do you mean? So what if somebody attack you? <laughs> Tyler, the Bible says turn the other cheek. I said Jesus wasn't talking to me when he said that. Well, the Bible says, no, I understand, but I'm just saying, go back and read that scripture. When Jesus was saying that, who was he talking to when he said that? Well, he was talking to his disciples then. Okay, now he was talking about what they was getting ready to face and get smacked in the face then. He ain't saying nothing about 2,000 years away from that. So what do you mean? What if somebody grab you and attack you? Brother Wilson, I said they're going to be surprised. Y'all, look, I'm, I'm being dead serious. The people in the Bible, they warred. I'm not condoning violence at all, but what I am saying, I'm at a point right now in God. I don't fear any of that. I don't fear nobody idle threats. I don't fear nobody saying they're going to cause harm to me. Oh, wait, whatever happens to me, hey, no matter what, I'm going to be off to be with Christ anyway. And when I get up there, he's going to be saying, yeah, you did it, son. You showed him. You showed him that you, you sure did. Hey, thanks for, thanks for holding it up. Thanks for doing your part. I am not a coward. Well, man, what if it's a big old strong dude? I'm going to tell that big old strong dude, sir, no matter what happens, I can guarantee you this. I promise you, if you grab me or touch me, I will get a part of your body. And whatever part of your body I get a hold of, I do not care. I am biting and I'm ripping stuff off. I'm ripping it out. This is me speaking openly in front of folks, Brother Thornton. I'm letting them know this. Because they say, man, people can bring, I'm telling you, if, if, if they're crazy, Todd, well, that's going to make two of us. Because if he grab me, I don't, what if he punch you and you fall down? Well, where is it in front of my face? I'm biting. I don't care if it's his thigh, his kneecap. I don't care if it's his stomach. I'm biting real hard and I'm ripping stuff out. Well, man, wait, then again, hey, look, don't, hey, that dude crazy. That's what I was trying to tell you. 
Am I supposed to just sit back and just, oh, well, if somebody comes to me, I'm just going to go, Lord, please don't allow this man. I'm like, sir, look, I, I, I don't want to fight you. I'm not, I just, I'm not want to fight you. You tell me because of the truth that I'm bringing forth, because of the words I'm spilling forth, it actually has gotten to you that bad to where you actually want to cause violence to me now? How? Why? Truth penetrates. Truth penetrates. This is like a two-edged sword splitting the soul. And when you hit people with that, that's how a lot of times they want to respond. They want to respond in violence. When they have nothing intellectually to say to rebuttal what you were bringing forth, they want to respond by name calling. They want to respond by violence. They want to respond by trying to cancel you. They want to respond by trying to shout you out when you bring the truth forth. It does not matter. So now you got a whole lot of ministers and all this calling now. Brother, how did you get the how did you get the tenacity? How did you? Don't you got the Holy Ghost? How are you I'm, I'm, how are they asking me this, Brother Thornton? Sister Booker, how are they asking me this? They are ministers of God. They are men of God, they say. So how are you asking me this? Are we supposed to have the same exact Holy Ghost? What do you mean, how do I have the tenacity or the integrity? What do you mean? So now I gotta go back and Lord, are these people really led by you like they say they are? See, some people. Some people were actually called to preach, while some people have actually been taught to preach. And that's a huge difference. You can always tell. Some people, y'all hear that? Some people are taught how to preach, while some were called to preach. This is no time right now to be in Christ and to be scared of anything that's going on in this world right now when we know who our deliverer is when we know who's going to get us out of this, when we know who is ahead of our life, when we know who keeps us at peace. You have to be a light because family is going to bring this stuff to you. They're going to come and bring it to you. They're going to talk to you about it. And all this stuff is going to do is going to get ingrained in you. It's going to become fearful, and you're going to become antisocial. I'm going to leave you all with this. I'm going to close here. <clears throat> Listen to the play on the words they use right now. Quarantine. Do y'all know who core team was made for? Or even in the hospital, if you worked in a hospital setting. Do you know what isolation, who isolation is for? That's right. It's for the ones that are sick, right? If you go in that room with the person that is sick, you have to put on whatever that isolation tag says. It might say droplet precautions, which means you need to put on a mask, gown, Gloves. It might say contact isolation. You need to put on a gown, mask, and gloves. It might say airborne precautions. You got to put on a mask, gown, gloves, and goggles, and booties. It's to protect you from getting sick when you go into that room. Quarantine. So right now, you are sick until proven healthy. What we got going on right now? A lot of people are healthy in this church right now. A lot of people I know I work with are healthy right now. But the way they put this psychology on us, you are sick until proven healthy. I said, man, hold on, wait a minute. The hospital was made for if somebody got something going on with them, they come to the hospital because something is wrong with them. Now, in the hospital, we got people coming to the hospital because they think something might happen to them. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? We are living in a time right now to where a lot of us have fear in us because we think and embedding that something might happen to us. Well, Tom, I don't want you to spread around no misinformation. I, if I was spreading around any misinformation, they would be coming after my license. I don't care. Well, uh, what, the video you did, YouTube took it down for misinformation. The video you did, Facebook took it down for misinformation. The video that you did, Instagram took it down for misinformation. They're taking down all kinds of doctors and PAs. and They're taking down all kinds of people in medicine stuff when they put it up there because they don't want you to get the truth I'm gonna say this slow they are having so much fear put on you that they have you going around betting that you might get something so I said this so wait right now and look I want to make this clear I know that in our church right now and I'm talking about Christ's tabernacle we never had nothing put up, and I know Brother Wilson never put nothing up to where he said, you need to wear a mask, or he said, you don't need to wear a mask. It's what you call a choice. It's your freedom to do it, plain and simple.
But what I am telling you this, put that out the way, get that disclosure out the way. What I am saying is for is this. Ask yourself, and I don't want you to answer this, but ask yourself, ask this within your mind. If you are wearing a mask, and I want you to answer this, I'm not saying this to make anybody feel bad at all, I promise you I'm not. But if you are wearing a mask everywhere that you go, why? And I already know the answer. You will say because of the coronavirus that's going around. You will say because of the COVID-19, whatever. You will say because of the, you know, the, the variant that they say going around right now. This is not my first run in with this. It wasn't called COVID-19. It wasn't called no Delta variant. But I have treated patients, have been around patients that have coronavirus. And when we see something on their chart or something on the wall and it says that it is a droplet, droplet precaution, that means somebody has to spit on you literally almost. And when it touches your lips and you lick your lips and it gets inside your body, that's how it gets in. Did y'all know that? But see, TV and mainstream media got y'all thinking that it's just floating out in the air. It's not. It's a droplet precaution. Okay? So what I say is this. And I, like I said, this is nothing against anybody that's wearing a mask. I promise you it's not. So what I did, Brother Thornton, I asked because a lot of folks are really fearful. I said, go back a year and a half ago. Go back a year and a half ago before any of this stuff started. Why weren't you wearing a mask then? Well, because the pandemic went around. I said, yeah, but uh, you do know that MRSA was. <laughs> what are you talking about? You do know that, uh, you do know that there's almost 10 plus other diseases that you can get from saliva going around. You do know that, right? You do know the cold was still around, right? You do know the flu was around, right? Why weren't we wearing no masks then? Because they knew that we were so used to doing that, they know that we were so used to seeing that, that we knew it was of none effect. How come is that if we get a cold, we don't sit there and panic? Do, who in here has ever got like freaked out because your nose got stopped up? Who in here has ever got freaked out is because when your nose got stopped up and you had a runny nose and you might have had some drainage in the back and you know with a cold, you can't taste your food, why weren't you freaking out then? Huh? Well, because this one is different, how? You're not getting the right numbers, ladies and gentlemen. You're not getting the right numbers. I don't care how many people, they, well, over 600,000 people died from coronavirus. No, they didn't. Yes, you heard me. No, they didn't. 600 some thousand people died with coronavirus along with 10 other comorbidities or other 10 other illnesses along with that. And 90% of those people were 70 and above. Why aren't they telling us this time? Fear, control. I sat there and had some blood work done while going through one of my residencies. I never been vaccinated. Yeah, I'm not, look, I'm not saying that. Hey, do what you do. I promise you, do what you do. I just feel that this just really needs to be said to ease some folks' minds. I've never been vaccinated. I'm not talking about with COVID-19. I'm talking about anything, y'all. Measles, mumps, rubella, tetanus, uh, hepatitis A, especially when we was going through our residencies and all that. They said, you know, you need to get the hepatitis A shot or the hepatitis B shot. I'm like, no. Nah. Well, okay, well, you want to sign this disclosure. Matter of fact, when I was going through one of my residencies, I had to have Brother Wilson sign off on it, a religious exemption. Why? So check this out. The last one that I went to, when we had to do like a rotation with orthopedics dealing with knee replacements and all that, because he's going to be around blood. They said, well, Leah, uh, we need some blood work done. Since you don't want to get this done, we just need to do some blood work, because you know we got to have all these things to make sure that you don't have anything in your body that might affect the patient. You got to have peanut butter. I did this. Why they come back and tell me, man, yeah, you look pretty good. You seem to have antibodies for everything. Did y'all hear me? They took my blood and said, you seem to have antibodies for everything. I'm like, wait, what do you mean everything? You got antibodies for measles, mumps, and rubella? You got, I said, you know I've never been vaccinated, right? Nor have my sons. Ask me how many times Brian and Brandon have been sick with something. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You have something in your body called an immune system. And if that immune system is not compromised, it can take care of anything that you get. Did you know that if you actually get the COVID-19, did you know you have a 99.7% chance of surviving it without no medicine? Did you know that? They're not telling you that. Why? It's about control, ladies and gentlemen. It's about fear. If I can put fear in you, I can control you. 
If I can control you, you don't have your mind. You are not your own. You belong to whatever is controlling you. Now, am I sitting there telling you guys all right now, take those masks off? No, I'm not saying it because I know all of us are on different levels mentally. I know that some of you guys might have something underlying within your system that if you happen to get COVID-19, it will do some damage to you possibly. I get that. That's not what I'm talking about. But again, with the code, y'all on here go shopping, right? Y'all go to the stores and stuff? Y'all go to the stores. How many jars, bottles, cases, and everything in this store have you touched? Can you imagine if people started doing that, Brother Thornton? Imagine if right now, the same news that a lot of y'all watchers got y'all scared right now, imagine if you went to the store and all of a sudden the news just got y'all freaking out about touching anything. Ladies and gentlemen, if you go to the store, make sure you spray the bottle that you want to touch and read. So let's just say you typically going through a store, you want to get something, right? You go in there, you look at that, mm. Hmm. Y'all think I might get, uh, no, I'm not going to get this right now. You put it back. As soon as you put that back, all of a sudden, something gets in your mouth, the eyelash, anything. And you, you touch your hands, but then you just touch your tongue after just touching that thing right there. What if the person that touched that thing right there had mercy? What if the person that touched that bottle needed, what if the stock person that put it up there, what if he had COVID-19? What, what, what if he had uh, the flu? You know what I'm saying? What if, he had, what if he had like herpes? What if he had AIDS? What if he had HIV? And he just touched that thing right there. Can you imagine the news kept on pushing this stuff around? Nobody would be going shopping. I'm delivering it. I'm getting my stuff delivered because they say people touch stuff. It's spread. Matter of fact, one of my minister friends, real cool with, down in St. Louis, got the whole church scared again. They said that this Delta variant is on gas pumps. Who went and swabbed the gas pump and then turned it into a lab and said, now it's on gas pumps? This is where we at? you telling me they could come up with anything right now and we would believe it because we are so scared. Tyler, you just lucky right now because I'm saying, no, no, no. I've been working with COVID-19 patients since day one. When I say working with them, I'm talking about in their face. We're talking, of course, I'm in there with my proper stuff on, but I've been there since day one. Have not gotten any of it. Well, that's because, no, quit with the that's because. I do not fear any of this because I know who my hands belong to. I know who hands I am in. My hands, what I mean by that, my hands, my work, what I do, it belongs to the Lord. Whose hands I am in, they are in God's. I don't fear none of this because ultimately my end is going to be to be with him. And if my end is going to be with Christ, then I can just live this life free without no fear, with peace, without no mental stuff that's going on in my mind that got me going all crazy. I can live my life completely free. This is all about enslavement. This is all about actually doing the opposite. This is to put you back in chains mentally. Go ahead and stand. So, if you are here, and I'm not asking any of you to do this, I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking about on your own time. I'm not saying this to cause nobody to be kind of scared or anything like this. I'm just simply saying to you guys, get with Christ. Get with Christ. If you have the Holy Spirit, he is in you. People are right now, Sister Pope, they're saying right now, oh, man. If we can just get God to, oh, oh man, I'm looking for God to, wait, isn't he in you? You looking? Where are you looking for? Where are you looking at? He's in you. It's that simple. God is wanting us right now to let him just simply show himself through us. Through us. But if I'm looking like everybody else, then what makes me different than anybody else? How can I sit up there and talk about this almighty, this all-powerful, this all-knowing, this, all, this, this, this awesome God? He's a strong tower. How can I sit there and talk about all that when I'm looking just like everybody else? I do not fear any of this. And it has been proven. And if you get on track with this, people are going to see that you are going to be a force to be reckoned with. And that's the reason why what we see going on right now in our world is going on. That's the reason why folks are now trying to call and just, I mean, I told you all the way till May, 
Folks trying to get me to come speak all the way up to me. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with people want to see hope. People want to see light. People want to be encouraged. People just want the truth. And the truth is Christ. Plain and simple. We have something called a freedom of religion. And some of these people say, well, I don't want to go to speak there. Because if you're going to speak there, you're not going to be allowed to talk about Jesus. Who told them that? Well, why are they letting me? Well, that's because, no, no, no. See what I'm saying? Who told us that we cannot carry Christ everywhere we go? I carry him everywhere I go. I don't care if it's at a school meeting. I don't care if it's anywhere. If they cause me to come speak somewhere, I will be letting them know the one that's leading the guy in my life is Christ. Plain and simple. If you don't want Christ, then I don't know what else to tell you, but I'm just telling you that's what got me where I am right now. That's what has me so bold right now. That's what has me so full right now because that Holy Spirit lets me know I will take care of you. And if it's going to take care of me, I'm not about to sit back and worry. So I challenge us in the church, listening on the line, listening on YouTube, I challenge you just to simply do what Christ said. He said, cast some, a few, one thing, a couple. He said, cast all your cares upon me. He didn't say cast all the cares of everybody else stuff. He said, cast all your cares on me. I care for you. I care for you. Cast all of it on me. But you know what we're doing? We're casting on everybody else. Hey, man, you see this Delta variant? This, did y'all know nobody died from the Delta variant yet? Don't believe that lie. They haven't. It. It's weaker. The Delta variant is weaker. It's not a new strain. Hello, went to school. Microbiology, genealogy, pathology, virology. Yeah, had all that. I had all that. It is not a new strain. It's what you call a variant. A variant just means it changed in form, but the functionality of it did not change. So if you have an immune system that actually got rid of the first COVID-19 virus that you may have had, the functionality of the COVID-19 variation that called the Delta right now is no different than the COVID-19. So all of a sudden, now you need another shot. Are you kidding me? And I'm going to say one other thing. How is it that last year, people that went into health care, we go in every day. They got commercials up about us and everything. Our health care workers, they care. Our heroes, they go in every day. They're putting their lives on the line. They going in and taking care of our residents. Those same health care workers that don't want the vaccination, they're trying to damn us now. Wait a minute, what happened to last year whenever I was going in and helping your mom? What happened to last year when I was going in and helping your relative? What happened to me going in and being called a hero now? I didn't have the vaccination in, and I'm a hero? I have not gotten COVID-19. Still the same guy. Still going in there doing my daily job. But now because I don't want this, all of a sudden I'm being damned now. All of a sudden I'm a super spreader. But guess what? I'm not saying God did this. Now, people that are vaccinated, did y'all know that? People that are vaccinated can spread it too and be contagious again. So what did it do? Well, see, the ones that got the vaccination, it can actually help them. Don't believe none of that stuff because there is no research on that. You want to know why? Nobody is an expert in this virus. Did y'all know that? It is a new virus. It's new to the whole world, so there is no expert. But I do know who is. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the expert. And if Jesus tell me, fear not, cast all your cares upon me, then I'm not going to worry about it, Lord. Whatever comes, it just comes. I'm going to have faith enough that if I do get it, I'm going to be well. Because it's a 99.7% recovery. And I'm going to worry? No. So what I'm saying to the church, when you get home, if you are a person that this actually does plague your mind, because I know it is, I know there's people out there that's like that, if it is actually causing some type of fear, some type of worry in your life. All I'm saying, don't tell nobody. And please don't come talking to me about it. No, see, Tyler, what's he, what's he, when I, no, no, cast all your cares upon him. Cast all your cares upon Jesus. Don't come bringing it to me. Cast them all on Jesus. He is the one that's going to actually get you through this. I can't do it. So again, when you get home, on your own time, cast your cares upon Christ and do yourself and your family members a favor and don't bring it to them because they can't do nothing about it. Let God be real in your life. Let God be that deliverer. 
Let God be their savior. Let God be their strong tower. Let him be all those things that everybody that's most likely been in this church have been hearing about what this God is. We hear about it, but then have you actually experienced it? Let God, matter of fact, pray that God, let me be the experience. Let me be the experience, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I thank you right now. I thank you for everything you do in my life, God. I pray that you continue to bless us. God, I pray that you allow that every person that is filled with your Holy Spirit, I pray that you allow that Holy Spirit to just kind of raise up in them, allow them to tap into, allow them to be led and led greatly within your life, Lord Jesus. I ask you again, let them be led in your life, Lord. Let them be guided by your Holy Spirit. Let them tap into the Holy Spirit to where the Holy Spirit can lead them into all truth and righteousness and bring worrying and doubt, bring it all down, Lord Jesus. But it's only going to be done through you. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen.